Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Forever Lee and let's get started. So today I'm going to be telling you guys the entire like timeline of the entire Mindplex staff team, how it works and just what goes on if you happen to get accepted. And I already did a application video so you guys can go check this out. I'll link it right here if you guys are interested in that. And that is a video I made to help the people that are wanting to uh, make a very good application and whatnot. So I'm going to get right to the point. So beginning, you have the application phase. Now this time is around two weeks, at least it was for me. I had my time around 14 days from start to finish. And the longer that your app is in, like the better. So if your app is in for at least a week, that's really good because that means they're actually considering you. And most of the bad apps get filtered out within a few hours. So if you get in for longer than, I would say, three or four days, you're in good shape. So then the staff team during this time period checks you out to see if you're even decent enough to even be on the staff team. They check your maturity levels, how you act in game, how you act for a loss, um, how you are able to like handle stress and whatnot. And they basically watch you on secondary accounts. So they're on accounts that are like um, not even staff members and they'll be like asking you questions and whatnot too. And uh, then you get monitored, which is basically what they do. And they do a background check on you. So they make sure that you're okay. They ask people about you to see if you're good and if you're a decent person. And if you happen to get denied at this stage, you will have a, a two week reapplication time period and you have two weeks to redo your application, um, see what they told you, message them and see what they said. And if you're underage, then it's gonna be a one month cooldown. So if you're overage, it's gonna be a two week cooldown. But if you happen to get accepted, you will move on to the interview process. During the interview, I'm not entirely sure this changes all the time, but basically they ask you different questions about your knowledge of the server. Now this can be anything, as I said, I don't want to like leak anything because I'm not that kind of person that will um, guess speak out of the communication policy, which is a thing that binds us from saying too much about the staff team, but I am going to say the amount that we're actually allowed to. So uh, anyway, this is the interview process where they ask you about the knowledge of the server, basically um, whatnot yeah and uh, they ask about you and just general questions about yourself what kind of person you are and they can kind of gain your personality through this uh, the interview changes frequently um, the time like the length of the interview changes and the questions change all the time um, and the uh, recruitment actually records each interview so that they know who is best for the position and who is not if they happen to want to re listen to the entire thing um, but this is a pretty important interview. This is where they learn about your personality, about who you are, and who you are as a person, how you're going to be acting compared to all the other staff members, and perhaps the better mentor for you during your uh, two-month trial. So if you happen to get past the interview process, which is a pretty good chance if you do happen to get accepted, um, you would get announced at the trainee acceptance party every Friday starting at 3.30 EST, I believe. And uh, this, from that exact date that you're announced at TAP, that is when your two-month trial begins. As a trainee, you're going to be basically assigned to a mentor by time zone and preference. So if you are like independent and you want an independent mentor, then they're going to give you that. Um, also by time zone, so they want you to be able to work with your mentor one-on-one -on -one with a good time zone. But anyway, during your two-month trial, you'll get this mentor and they will be along with you. And to get your first training tag, they'll ask you some short questions before you get your tag. And you have to get these, well, not necessarily right, but it's kind of like a little checklist that they ask you before you're able to actually get your trainee tag. So it could take quite a while. Throughout your two-month trial, you're going to have these things called staff reports. Now, because trainees are, well, trainees, they're not full moderators yet. They don't have full powers and permissions as um, all the mods do. And so you'll be required to have staff reports. Now, this is when you are muting someone for a severity three offense. But as a helper you're, or trainee, you're only able to mute with a severity 1, and that's the max. So if you see someone that's more than a severity 1, you will make a staff report, and you'll get them banned or muted for longer by a higher-up person. So they would be mods or senior mods. And every day, depending on your mentor, you'll have these things called questions of the day. And these are questions of the day that they ask, and you basically have to test your knowledge. And every day you'll get a new one, as I said, depending on your mentor. I don't know, not all mentors do these questions of the day, but most of them do, and chances are you'll have them. But these questions of the day, they will basically test your knowledge. If you fail this question of the day, they will most likely write it down and they'll correct you. And you're able to get help with it, at least in your first part of the days. 
Next are the sub teams you can join. So this is like joining the forums or the TeamSpeak team. Now these are just sub teams that are optional. You don't have to join these, but if you want more experience on your further and future applications, which I will talk about later, um, you will want to join these sub teams and um, you can help out even more that way. As your two month trial is starting to close, you will be taking a quite difficult test. I can't say anything about the test, um, but it's you need to be able to know everything about that. Um, and most of it, it's gonna be about 40% of your test grade, well, is gonna be your test grade, like depending on whether you're gonna get accepted, 40% is gonna be your test grade, and about 60% is gonna be what your mentor thinks about you. So each mentor, as a training management mentor myself, I was well, required to uh, give my opinion about my mentees, and if they were not, well, if they were not ready for mod, I would have to, unfortunately, uh, demote them, so. But if they were standing out and they were doing really well, then I would make sure to uh, promote them. And if they were kind of in between, then I basically let the test score to like decide on their fate. Um, and then, if you happen to get it even farther than that and you haven't been demoted, you'll have... Well, everyone actually has a one-on-one -on -one with the training management admin, and you will be told whether or not you got promoted or demoted. And this is a pretty intense part, especially for me. If you happen to have failed the test and your mentor did not like necessarily think you were very ready, you will be kicked off the team, your previous tag will be applied, and you'll be able to apply later. Now the previous tag, so if you're an ultra and you got trainee, you will actually have ultra back again. So don't worry about that, you will get your donor tag back if you happen to get um, demoted, I guess. But if you happen to get promoted, you will be moved on to the mod promotion. Now, this is the uh, shiny orange gold tag that everyone so wishes they had and gets. And um, so this is the beginning of that big trial. You'll have all these amazing new perks. You'll be able to um, like get permanent bans and you'll be able to have perma mutes and you have all these accesses to all these other severities. And you just have a lot more freedom. When you first get a mod, you get assigned to a mod mentor for two weeks. My mod mentor was, as I've said, Mindflex Vibes or Vibes underscore, depending on how you know him. And they help you through. They give you another test. It's harder and a lot more different questions, and I did not do very well on this test when I was a mod. But it doesn't matter if you fail it. You'll still be mod, and you won't get denied or anything for that. So just do your best, and whether you pass or fail is kind of just determine where you are at as a mod, and it doesn't really matter necessarily. But as a mod, you're basically on your own. Um, unless you're in a sub team, you're basically on your own. And speaking of sub teams, you will now be able to join the four moderator sub team, the team speak team, etc. And you'll be able to do all sorts of things like recruitment assistance and trainee management assistant, which is your step to becoming the trainee mentor. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much mod. You get a lot more freedom. You get a lot more, you know, like wiggle room to do stuff that you want. And from here, you're able to like you're able to mess up without basically completely overhauling everything. I mean, of course you have to let your mod or, or I guess your mod mentor or your admin know that you messed up so you don't get demoted if they find out and you haven't told them. So just be honest with that if you do happen to mess up and they'll let you know. But uh, then if you are wanting to join senior mod, which I did, I joined the training management senior mod team as everyone knows and I've said before, then you'll be having these, uh, well, at the time, I had a Skype chat where they would be announced. So uh, the open teams would be announced, and you'd have a link to the application itself, and then you'd fill out the application, and then you'd have an interview depending on which team you are on, and you'd have an interview from the admin of that team. If you even get that far, if you get accept or if you get denied, well, they don't even really tell you. They just kind of ignore your application, and they don't even tell you if you got denied or not. So you kind of have to just figure that out on your own. But uh, if you do happen to get accepted, you will be contacted by the admin of that team that is currently running it. And then if you do well, then you get to join that senior mod team, and that's really exciting. So with the senior mod team, you have a ton more responsibility. You have a lot of stuff to deal with. Depending on the team, you'll have a huge workload. So training management is a huge workload. You'll be spending a ton of time on it, and that's kind of what overwhelmed me. But as a senior mod, you're going to have to commit a ton more time. So if you are accepted, you will be spending many more hours than you would be able with mod. And you're not necessarily as free as a senior mod because you have so much stuff to do. But it is still really, really fun. You get to meet a lot of new people and get to have a close relationship with all the admins as well. So that's pretty cool. 
And guys, at the end, if you happen to resign or get demoted from the staff team, most people resign. Um, well, then you'll move back to your previous tag. So as I said, if you're an ultra, you will be moved down to an ultra and so on and so forth. And then you'll have this thing called reinstatement. This is also allowed for mod. So if you happen to resign, you'll have this thing called reinstatement, which is a basically an application you can for fill out. So with reinstatement, you get to skip the entire process of trainee, all those two months, all the tests and everything, and you get to go right back to mod. Now, if you happen to, well, you, you get this opportunity five months after you resign. So if you happen to resign and you want to go back to mod about six months later, unfortunately that's not allowed and you have to do it within five months. And um, so reinstatement gives you basically a free pass back to mod if you change your mind or if you have more time on your hands or whatnot and you just want to help out, then you can skip the entire training process and move on with that. And that's pretty cool. That was actually added by Blue Beetle when I was first staff member at the server itself. So I think that was pretty cool. So guys, that is the entire staff process. It's for basically from start to finish. Obviously there's more details than that, but that is the basics of the Mindplex staff team as a whole. As I said, I did not break any of like the communication guidelines, just I wasn't able to tell everything, otherwise <laughs> I would get banned, and obviously I don't want to do that, so uh, that is the staff member hierarchy and just the timeline of start to finish, and that's about it, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, let's try to get 20 likes on this video, and I will see you guys in a new video. Alright, bye guys.